All right, recording good. Welcome to episode 127 of the Solo Podcast, episode one of Fire the Missile. Sean, why did you name the podcast Fire the Missile? Great question. I named it Fire the Missile because it's the first thing you'll say when you open TikTok. Have you seen the mental illness? The way I believe that all bony lives matter. The absolute psychopaths on TikTok, especially TikTok Live. So Fire the Missile is something I used to say when I lived in L.A., and I, I would, you would see something insane. You'd be downtown and you'd see a crackhead chase an Asian woman for like four blocks. And you'd just go, fire the missile. Meaning Kim Jong-un, that's what I used to say. I used to say, Kim Jong, tell Kim, somebody tell Kim Jong to fire the missile. Because it's over. Now it's Putin. I don't even know if, if, if Kim Jong has a missile anymore. I don't know when the last launch is. Normally we give a shit about North Korea having a nuclear missile until the new iPhone comes out. Then people are like, we don't care. We'll film it with the new camera. Launch that bitch. So we're back. We had a long hiatus. A lot has happened since we've spoke on the podcast. Oh, another reason I'm naming the podcast Fire the Missile Episode 1 uh, because I've lost. Well, they're still there. But apparently, wherever my RSS feed is, that's the thing that links your podcast to all the podcast websites. Spotify switched the passwords and the, the platforms and all that. And so I can't, I'm locked out of 126 episodes of my own podcast. And I don't care that much to get it back. So they're still up there. But this is episode one of this new podcast. And uh, it's going to come out every Wednesday. So that's the new play. How are you doing? How have you been? What's been going on in your world? I gotta tell you, man, a lot. I don't even know the last episode. What was it, like January? No. Had to be like, had to be last year. Maybe it was February, who cares, whatever. But yeah, we're back, man, and so is fantasy football. Fantasy football is back. Aren't you excited? You know, I lived in L.A. for a few years, and uh, one time I was trying to go across Sunset Boulevard to see a friend just on the other side, and we were held up in unexpected traffic for some reason, and uh, that traffic ended up being the Pride Parade, and before I could get across Sunset, I saw a thousand dudes walking down the street uh, with their cocks in their hand, and somehow that's less gay than fantasy football. What are you guys doing? Something about a grown man. Dude, I was at an airport bar. And the two guys next to me were like, oh, I, I picked up Patrick Mahomes for my fantasy quarterback. Oh, I got DJ Metcalf round two. It's gay. And I don't mean gay like stupid. I mean gay like two dudes taking it in the ass. Gay. That's what fantasy football is. I don't, I don't understand. It's my fantasy it's weird. I've never understood it. And then they have the punishments. That was always fun when I did stand up in New York and these these fucking Wall Street guys, their punishment would be to perform stand up comedy for 5 minutes. Their punishment was my dream. And they'd have to wear a stupid t-shirt. I lost my fantasy league. Dorks. Yeah, I don't know. I've never, maybe it's fun. I'm sure it is fun. A lot of people play it, you know. You pick your team, your squad, and, and then you're, you know. Why don't you gamble? Why don't you lose some real money? Yeah? I like people that gamble. I like I like people that have a raging gambling addiction. You know, someone's like, oh, I have money on this game. And then you find out it's $10. That's not money. Putting $10 on a game, that's not that's, that's a beer. I want to know that if the bet doesn't hit, your family will be in shambles. I want to know that if the Buccaneers don't cover the over, oh, your house is getting foreclosed. That's the kind of money I want to see on a gamble, on a bet. Oh, I put $100 on the Seahawks. Put 20000 Put your fucking car. <laughs> I'm not trying to be a douche, okay? I'm just saying that if you play fantasy football, 
you would probably go to Epstein Island. If, if Jeffrey Epstein said, hey, do you want to come to my island? And f You'd be like, yeah, I already play fantasy football. That's another one of my fantasies, to fly to a pedophile. Right. No, fantasy football is lame. If you play it, grow up. Get some fucking friends. Get a life. Dude, when I, when I hear somebody talk about fantasy football, I immediately, I just, it slowly turns into them in one of those, like, animal costumes. Who are those... What are those freaks that dress up like animals and go and go in the woods and get fucked by other people dressed as animals? Furries. That's what you are. If you play fantasy football, you might as well be a furry in my eyes. I guess if your life is just so boring, the last bastion of fun is, hey, hopefully the kicker that I randomly selected kicks a couple field goals so I can win my fantasy league. And brag to the guys at the office. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's it. In other news, breaking news, there's a lawyer with Down syndrome. The first ever lawyer with Down syndrome. Uh, I don't know how far as a society we're going to take this. I'm not saying people with Down syndrome shouldn't be allowed to have careers. That's not what I'm saying. All I'm saying is, being a lawyer, how far are we going to take this, uh, you know, everybody can do everything mentality? That's what I want to know. I'm not trying to be an asshole, okay? I am not. But if I were on a plane and I heard, This is your captain speaking. They let me fly the big plane. I'd be a little worried, Okay. And if you think I'm an asshole for saying that Down syndrome people shouldn't be lawyers, hey, you hire her, okay? Hire that fine woman. God bless her. Let's say, hypothetically, you're convicted of triple homicide. You didn't do it, but for some reason, one of your hairs was found on body number two. You don't know how it got there, but now you're framed for triple homicide. You're in a cell, your parents are talking to you on the phone through the glass and they say, don't worry, son or daughter, don't worry. We got you the best lawyer we could afford. And you're like, thank God. And then day of, a person with Down syndrome walks into the courtroom and says they're representing you. You wouldn't go, oh shit. Holy shit, this isn't good. You know, hey, maybe they're the best lawyer ever. Maybe they get you out in less than an hour. Maybe the, maybe the case is just open and shut. You're proven innocent. Or maybe they open their briefcase and it's full of uncrustables. All I'm saying is, like we find the, <laughs> I'm... <laughs> I'm sentencing you to 39,000 years. And you're like, your honor, my lawyer has Down syndrome. He goes, hey. <laughs> Next case, or whatever they say, court dismissed. And you're just like, holy shit, dude. What have I done? What have we done? I also don't want AI lawyers. I've been seeing that. A computer decides your fate. Imagine it gets to 99% and then it starts buffering and you're just sitting there like, am I going to prison? Ding! Yes, you're fucked. <laughs> it was just a wild article. And uh, yeah, no, God bless her, man. I wish her the best. I think it's cool. But also, yeah, not for me, I don't think. Hopefully I'm never in court. I just beat a case actually in New York from years ago. These Jews were coming after me, man. But I sent my Jews. That's the thing, you know? When the Jews are fighting, you just wanna make sure you have the best Jew. That's the thing. All right, I'm gonna edit that out. It's like war. You know, you both flip an ace over and then you gotta go, I declare war and you hope your last card is a super Jew, you know? And mine was. My Jew whack-a-mold the other Jew.
case dismissed. See, you got to hire the Jew. Maybe a Jewish person with Down syndrome as a lawyer. Maybe then, you know, that'd be my exception. I would accept a Jewish lawyer with Down syndrome. All right. Just got off the tour. Been doing shows all over Florida. I did a run with the very funny Cam Patterson. If you guys watch Kill Tony, you know exactly who that is. Uh, it's crazy to see, man. He, he's he been on the podcast before. He was like episode 120 or 116 of the, the Sean Madden show. In uh, LA, San Diego. Shout out to everybody in San Diego, man. Holy shit. Especially that second show, bro. What a fucking audience, dude. Every line was just, ah. Yeah. Made you feel, it felt like you were, uh, I don't know, it felt like you were a better comic than you are. Let's just say that. It was very like, I had a blast, man. But yeah, I was on the road with uh, Cam So Funny. Check him out on Instagram. I've been rolling with Jari Nose. You guys know him. He's been on the show. Uh, Bobby Brown. It was a cool crew, man. Met a guy, Donnie Comedy, up in Detroit. And it was during the Netflix festival in Los Angeles. So it just, it felt like the city was back, man. I left back in 2020 during the pandemic because it was just kind of a free for all. Everybody was leaving, you know, I left myself, but it was just cool for everyone to be back there and uh, see people you haven't, it was like kind of like a reunion type thing. So that was a fun time. I uh, just did Jacksonville, Melbourne. If you haven't filled it out, I have a link in my bio on Instagram. Uh, you can put your email in your city. And if I get enough people in those cities, I'll definitely fly out, make the trip, man, and, and do a live show. I'll bring Florida man with me. Also, if you leave a review on the new podcast, Fire the Missile, Spotify, Apple, doesn't matter. Leave a review, subscribe to the mailing list. I will send you free merch. Whether you want a mug or a t-shirt, I'll send you some Florida man merch. Uh, so leave a review, help this new podcast, not new, it's just a new name, uh, but help it climb the charts again, man, because we were doing pretty good on the other one, uh, but I had to reset it, unfortunately, so this is technically episode one. Also, can we stop with the tattoos? Getting out of control, dude. There was a time in my life I wanted to get a little sleeve, a little half sleeve on the left arm under the watch, full douche mode, decided not to. I don't mind tattoos. Some of them look really fucking cool. Especially if you just get like a small one, something something decent. But man, some of these, dude, living in Florida, you will see the most beautiful woman you've ever seen. You're like, oh my God, look at that angel. And then she'll turn around and on her back, her entire back will have a dolphin riding a Harley Davidson, shooting an AK-47, and then underneath that, it says, never surrender. And you're like, why the fuck did you get that? Why did you, what is with the dream catcher between the tits, the cleavage? Why, why does every woman have a dream catcher now in between her? The disrespect, and it's always the women that are like, oh, oh, the, the native, we weren't very nice to the natives. And then they get a fucking dream catcher on their tits. Yeah, cultural appropriation. It's not a dream catcher, it's a jizz catcher. You look, it just looks bad. Oh, it's a dream catcher on my, on my tat, huh. yeah. That's where guys finish. I just, I see that and I go, somebody has jizzed on that before. Is that a weird way to look at it? That's how I see it. I go, that is just, yeah, that's your Indian name. That's your tribal name. One who catches jizz. That's what you are. All right, enough of the tattoos, dude. I get it, okay? They look cool. But nowadays, everybody has them. Wasn't the whole point of a tattoo not everybody has them? I grew up in Florida, so I've seen some really cool tattoos, and I've seen some horrendous ones. I had a friend, he had the Chevy logo on his chest growing up, never even had the truck. He goes, I will one day. I'm like, yeah, it's not a vision board, dude. All right. I have a couple houses saved on Zillow. I'm not going to get them tatted on my neck. Yeah, it's a fucking six bedroom, dude. Look at that. Doesn't make any sense, especially poor people. How come if you're broke, the first thing you go, oh, I'm down to my last $300. What should I do? 
oh my gosh, that's what I should do to get myself out of poverty. Get a dragon tattoo on my bicep. Well, hopefully that dragon can come to life and fly you to work because right now you're taking the bus. I don't have a lot of money, so I would never get a tattoo right now. I would just look at the butterfly on my arm and go, shit, I could have got groceries. Damn, that's at least four days worth of groceries. And the eyebrow, I'm, I'm on this new thing, dude. I mean, this podcast doesn't reflect it, but I'm on a new like live and let everybody else live. Why does it bother me what somebody else is doing? I shouldn't give a shit, right? But I haven't been smoking weed, so everything's just been fucking and raging me. Dude, if I, I'm like, you know what, dude? I'll be having a good day. And I'm like, hey, everything's fine. Everything's good. And then I'll just see somebody with an eyebrow piercing and I go, what the fuck? What is that? Why? It's common amongst restaurant staff, back of house, dishwashers, chefs, line cooks. They love an eyebrow piercing. Most of them don't even have a front bumper on their car, but they go, hey, before my shift, a matter of fact, I know I don't have a front bumper on my Honda CRV, but let me go call out of work so I can get an eyebrow piercing. That'll change my life. After you get an eyebrow piercing and you look in the mirror, do you go, nice. That's exactly what I thought it was going to look like. Fucking sweet. I don't understand it, dude. But again, I'm trying to understand. But I just can't. Some things I'll never understand, you know? Fantasy football. Eyebrow piercings. Tattoos. Do what you want to do. My new thing is actually to get out of arguments. I don't want to debate. During the pandemic, plandemic, during the pandemic. Dude, I was down. I would debate anybody. My whole thing now is to get out of all debates, all arguments. I just, I want nothing to do with any of it, dude. Can you believe Hamas and Israel? What do you think about the conflict? Well, I'm 30 years young and it's been going on as for as long as I can remember. Yeah. I would watch Rocket Power at 6 a.m., and then 7 a.m., the news would play something about the Middle East fighting about nothing. And I know it's not about nothing, all right? But let's just fucking relax, dude. How much, long, how much longer are the Muslims and Jews going to fight before it just gets completely nuked by America and we put a Starbucks and a Bucky's? That's what's going to happen. From the river to the sea, a Bucky's. That's, that's going to be the slogan. Bucky's. From the river to the sea, Bucky's. Starbucks. It's going to be the same shit, dude. As soon as we blow up the Middle East, it's going to be Starbucks, Taco Bell, McDonald's. Starbucks, Taco Bell, McDonald's. Chase Bank, Chase Bank, Chase Bank. Bank of America, Starbucks, Taco Bell, McDonald's. Go to any city in this country, dude. Even a town. Go to a small town in this country and be like, wow. I'm sure they have some pretty cool mom and pop shops. Nope. Arby's. It's the same bullshit everywhere, dude. But that's what people deserve. People don't care. They just go, hey, are you open at 4 a.m.? We'll support you. But yeah, thanks for tuning into the podcast. We're going to try to, not going to try. We are going to drop these every single Wednesday. One more thing before I go. I don't know if you guys saw the Russian spy whale. Apparently the Russians, speaking of conflicts, a Russian spy whale was shot off the coast of Norway. And immediately I'm like, I'm interested. What is a Russian spy whale? Apparently it's cheaper than to build submarines and, and man them or even unmanned, whatever. It's cheaper to just strap a radar and a GoPro onto a whale and just, I guess, they, they said it, they said they trained it. I don't know. I'll put the article down here. But they said they trained it. So this thing just acts as a submarine, just a natural submarine. It just swims through the ocean, all around the ocean. 
and it has a radar and a camera on it. And it just, it's a, uh, <laughs> the, the Russians are just hiring sea life to work for them, which is pretty fucking cool. You know, I would much rather be a Russian spy whale than to work at SeaWorld, you know, slowly getting that erectile dysfunction fin because you're depressed from just swimming in a tank all day, splashing fat people. <laughs> the whale splashed me. Yeah, that's what you have. Those are your two choices as a whale. Work for Putin or die at SeaWorld. But yeah, dude, just Vladimir the spy whale working. <laughs> Vladimir the spy whale working for Vladimir Putin. Not a bad gig, dude. Other whales are coming up to you. Eee! Eee! What, what is that on your back? Eee! You go, oh yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fucking special forces troop for Putin. Don't worry about it. My name's Vladimir, secret agent. Getting shot by a foreign government as a spy whale is way better than swimming in a pool in Orlando, Florida. Let me tell you. If someone came to me right now as a human being and said, you can just swim in the pool in Orlando or you can be a Russian special forces soldier, I'm going Russian Special Forces soldier. It's just cooler on paper. <laughs> you imagine that? You get kidnapped as a whale and you're like, fuck, fuck, fuck. I'm going to SeaWorld. Shit. And then all of a sudden, you got a fucking missile launcher on your back. And you're back in the ocean. You're like, holy shit, dude. I'm a Russian spy whale. I just thought that was insane. Who shot the thing, by the way? And that's, that's why the article got so big is because animal rights activists were going crazy about it. Why'd they shoot the whale? Yeah. I guess they didn't want to dive in and, and, and unharness the, the radar <laughs> and the camera. So they just shot it. That's how much money the military industrial complex has. They're like, hey, let's not just uh, safely remove the equipment off the whale. Let's just fucking shoot at it. Because that's how much we can afford to waste ammo. What if they shot a torpedo at this thing? It costs 50 grand to blow up a Russian spy whale. And they're like, fuck it. Taxpayer money. I know I've said this before, but I would love to just be able to write my name on some of the equipment that the U.S. government's bought with my paycheck. It'd be kind of cool. You know? It'd be kind of cool. You see a drone strike and you go, hey, I helped, I helped fund that. You know, you just see Sean Madden just fuck. Just let me sign it. But I'll do it for the show, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in again. We're gonna do this every Wednesday. The fire the missile. Hey, we ended on a we ended on a missile. But yeah, fire the missile, man. Uh, episode one, really episode one twenty seven. But you know what I mean. I don't have to say it again. Uh, leave a review. Fill out the form. Let me know. Uh, I'll come to your city, and uh, we'll have a good time, dude. The live shows have been so fun, and um, I'm glad to be back on the podcast. It's, uh, it's cool. All right. You guys have a good one, man. I'll see you next week.